It is just an absolute huge honor for me to be in Paris, France with uh, two of my boys. And I was fortunate enough to have three local French dentists, um, Anthony, Gregory, and Jerome, and uh, meet me at the hotel lobby bar. And um, I was the only one who showed up properly dressed with a French beret and a Paris shirt. But uh, you forgot to wear your hat, I see. But um, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, so basically, probably 81% of the people listening are from the United States. The other 19% are from 140 countries. So m the first thing everybody just wonders is, what is it like being a dentist in France as opposed to you know any other country? It oh, uh, I think it's marvelous. What do you think, guys? I'm so, so happy to be a dentist in France. Uh, first thing I want to say is nobody wear that in France. Huh? You have to know. <laughs> Neither this sweater. Oh, they sell like them <laughs> on every corner. So someone's got to be wearing them. Yeah, but it's just for uh, <laughs> tourists, you know? Just for tourists? Um, it's quite exciting, but uh, we've got uh, some uh, issues with the social security system. So uh, the, problem the, the problem in France is to be able to deal with uh, your patient and, what, and your patient. And uh, and with the, the social security, which is there to to because we want like as French people that everybody to, to is able to be to be uh, treated, but uh, it's a, an economical issue. So it's complicated sometimes to to be able to treat everybody and to to earn enough money to to be able to to go uh, forward and and to to have your own uh, office and everything so uh it's, it's uh, i like it but uh, sometimes it can be difficult but i think uh, it's uh, like that for everybody uh, who's a dentist in these times so so how does the government pay for dentistry is it the government or if you work at a company does the company pay for it does the government pay for it or does the French so, citizen pay out of their own pocket? So, uh, everybody pay with these taxes uh, for the social security. Not everybody. If you don't earn enough money, you, you don't pay, for sure. Um, and uh, if you go to the dentist to have a, a feeling, anything, um, for this kind of treatment, you, you are uh, refunded you are found by the the government so you pay uh, 40 euros for filling how much would 40 euros be in the in us dollars uh about uh, maybe 36 50. Uh, 50 yeah sorry so 40 euros or 50 dollars yeah. for a filling yes you are if you are a dentist like, like a regular dentist you are not allowed to ask m for more uh, money for a filling it's Do, does the government euros. set the fee? Yeah, it depends on which kind of treatment you are you you're doing, and it depends if you've got um, you you signed uh, the contract with the government. So the, the problem is uh, like ninety five percent maybe of the dentists sign with the government because your patients are refunded uh, from the the treatment you're 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 doing. Uh, but it means that you are not allowed to ask more than uh, 50, uh, 50 euros for a filling, for example. Now, is that for adults or just children? For adults. Like, it doesn't change a lot between adults and, uh, <coughs> and children. But oh. there is other treatment, like, like prosthetic treatment. You are allowed to, to, to ask uh, for more. But the prices from, uh, of the government are ridiculous like you uh, a crown is supposed to be uh, 100 euros uh, it's something like that and 100 uh, euros would be uh, 120 120 US so, dollars so you ask for I don't know whatever like uh, 700 euros for uh, for a crown so the patient pay uh, 700 the government refunds 120 so you can yes. so the government doesn't set the fee for a crown or an inlay or an onlay yeah you set your own fee and and the government pays a minimum for amount a crown, for, for a crown you can ask you 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 choose your fee for a filling you are not allowed to ask more for more than the government say okay um 
wouldn't it be really hard to do a filling for 50 euros? It's impossible to do it proper, like as you, su you, you are supposed to, to, to do it if you want to do it uh, properly. So what do the 35,000 dentists think of getting a fee that is impossible to do it how like, you would like? I mean, you have to make a choice. You have to, to do what you want to do. Like if you want to do it perfectly, you have to, to ask for more if you are, even if you are not allowed. Mm -hmm. Or you have to, to follow the rules and you can do the best way you can. Like, it's just... So I just take it that. for, um, you said 50 euros for a filling? Yeah. And that would be, 50 euros would be how many it's US dollars? 40, 40, 40, 40 euros would be 50 US dollars. So what, so I assume you would do an amalgam, a silver filling amalgam, as opposed to a composite resin if you're only getting... 40 euros. Uh, personally, I never do uh, amalgams. I what, only do uh, composites. What what percent of the dentists in France are like you and don't do composites? And don't I don't do amalgams. Do, I I don't have an idea. It's like, to evaluate such, such, such what would you guess? What would your gut feeling be? No, I, I think the, the the biggest part of the dentist uh, make uh, make both amalgam and uh, and composite. Uh, the majority do both. Yes. Um, but maybe five to ten percent make a, a bigger part of uh, a, so much more uh, composite than uh, amalgams. I think maybe. So, uh, but it's always the same problem. You can you, you can uh, earn enough money with uh, 50 euros for a composite that you do in one hour of treatment. So you have to to make your choice. We can indirectly. Yes, the one from yesterday. Okay. Yeah, but can you do the one from yesterday? Yeah. So the, the the resellers of rubber dam, uh, it is said that less than five percent of the the, res the reseller. Um, no, oh, come on, say. <laughs> it is said that uh, only uh, five percent of the dentists are buying rubber dam. Only five percent. Only of the five percent of dentists. Dentists. That is, okay. I thought it was three percent. Three percent. Okay, three percent. Okay, okay. Um, so, if you evaluate five percent of the dentists only using the rubber dam, you can say that uh, only the, the same the same uh, amount of dentists are correctly uh, are only using uh, composites or glass polymers and no no amalgams, no alloy. So, um, I, I, I think it's the, the most interesting thing when you travel around the world. Um, it seems like the dentistry is far more similar than the reimbursement mechanisms. Like Singapore has no insurance. Tokyo, Japan, across the, the island does. Um, it's, um, it's so bizarre how, like in uh, London, you know, they just pay you a fee for 15 minutes and, you know, whatever you do. Um, And I notice in Japan, you're an endodontist. Um, they they spread out the endodontic appointment over 10 appointments because they just get a little bit of money each appointment and they cannot afford to do a root canal unless they see you 10 times. And it's just, um, it's kind of strange. When, you know, you would think a great country like Japan would just fix that in a, in a minute. You know, why make all their citizens go to 10 appointments, you know? So it really, so how you get paid really affects how you do your dentistry, doesn't it? You can, uh, you can answer that. <laughs> well, I mean, have you ever done an, a root canal in 10 appointments? <laughs> no. But it, it's Because common. Three, uh, Be, but, but I saw some uh, Japan patients and uh, they were very surprised about one session, one treatment. They were surprised. So It's like that in France, uh, yeah, and I think in the rest of the world too. So they were surprised. And for myself, uh, for the the fees, uh, it's like uh, you have the the social security part, and you have like an invoice just uh, next to the social security part, and it is the choice of the patient to do or not the care uh, if you want to do the root canal treatment with me or not. So, so have, uh, how much does the government pay you to do a molar root canal? And do they pay you the same fee as a general dentist or yeah. is it endodontist yeah. get a different fee? Yeah, because there is no uh, specialty in France. 
there is no endodontic specialty recognized in France. Only so oral surgery, orthodontics, and oral pathology? Yes. No, not the oral pathology. Uh, uh, orthodontics? Like it's quite new, but yeah, not okay. okay. So, so, so you're not even a specialist in no. France as an endodontist? No. So how, how much do they pay you to do a molar root canal? Eight, yeah, I, I spoke in euros, so 80, how much? 80 euros. 80 euros? 87 euros. 87 euros, so yeah. that would be how much in US dollars? So 100, 100, 100 dollars. Yeah. 100, so how do you do a root canal? How do you make a living doing root canals? I, I can't, so US? that's why there is a, like an invoice next to uh, the uh, 100 dollars. You can only charge more. Yeah, so. It depends on your office. If you are, if you're like him, uh, here. An, an exclusive endodontics. If you are exclusively doing endo endodontics, then you have to charge more your your treatments. Or you are a general dentist and you do prosthodontics, then you get, I mean, you you earn your life only with the prosthodontics, and not with endodontics. Meaning that most of the dentists do not earn money or should I say they lose money for basic cares while they are earning money with uh, all the cares that not s where the prices are not set by the government like implants, like prosthodontics, like uh, orthodontics for adults and so on. So you, it's kind of a loss leader so you do cleanings, exams and fillings at, and root canals at a mm. loss and then you make up for it. Even scaling, periodontics, for example, the periodontics, only the only basic scaling is uh, is reformed by the Social Security, which has set the price for 28 euros. So that means less than less than $40 for, for, for scaling. And um, so most of the, like most of the most of the cares like this uh, are underpaid. And this is where dentistry was born with Pierre Fichard. What do you think Pierre Fichard would think of these uh, payment mechanisms? You know Pierre Fichard. <laughs> yes. No, this, is, this is really dangerous because uh, it means that if you want to, to be able to, to live with your dentistry, like, you have to make uh, more crowns, more implants, more. And if you do just conservative, like restorative dentistry and endo, and you are not a, a special, specialist in endodontics, you have to to push over the uh, the indication of implant of crowns or so it's it's not a uh, very smart in a, um, for uh, uh, public health because it's interesting for the short term but in long term uh, public health it's not good at all because you 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 make some crowns or on the two that just don't need it so it's uh, and, and, and you, it you 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 will remove some teeth just to make it to put implants because you can you can ask for one thousand euros for implants but you can cannot uh, ask uh, more than uh, than uh, forty euros like fifty fifty dollars for for filling so so in economics they call that game theory so when they set a uh, game people start changing their the rules i mean when they see the rules they start changing their behavior to game the rules so that they can make money off rules yes so that's um that's not kind of what pierre fichard would want <laughs> the, the, the influence is on the dentist the influence is on the dentist and on the patients meaning that dentists will, um, will prefer to do uh, a certain type of treatments instead of others, even, even if it's not in the best patient's uh, interests. And for the patients, it's the same thing, meaning if uh, someone, one, is, one is missing uh, one, one tooth, he would prefer a bridge over an implant, because the bridge is reformed by the social security while the implant is not. And that's that's one of the issues uh, of, of France. I, I guess it's one of the issues with social security in, gener in general. So as an endodontist, if you're only getting paid a hundred dollars US for a molar root canal, then what are, are you, did you not sign the contract since that's all you do? It, it, it's the second way. So you have two options in France. You can sign the contract with social security as Anthony and Jerome and as I am. 
So, and the second way is to not to sign the contract. We call it in France déconventionné. We are outside, outside non-compulsory. Yeah, we are outside the convention. And what did you do? I, I'm thinking about it. Are you, did you sign the contract no, now? No, yeah, I, I'm under contract now, and I'm thinking about in the future to uh, to be outside. It depends. So, if you sign the contract and you're only getting a hundred dollars for a root canal, what what other procedures are you doing to cover your losses? Oh, there is a missing misunderstanding inside because effectively I have uh, 100 dollars of social uh, social security but I'm, I can ask to my patient to complete and to put more money uh, until I get paid uh, for all the treatments until which the 800 dollars I, as I want so the patient choose if he want to to do to have a root canal treatment with me he accept to pay if not you can go outside and find another dentist. So how much do you charge for a root canal non-compulsory? Ah, the big questions. Uh, 800. 800? Yeah. Significantly higher. Yeah. So when you said only 3% of the French dentists buy rubber dams, my question was, how many endodontists do you think are in France? You got, what, 60 million people and 35,000 dentists? How many endodontists do you have? Uh, sp there are, especially in big cities, uh, I think in all friends we are maybe 100 and 150 like this 150 ended on us yeah I think so and are you trying to make it a specialty or does it not matter it does not matter it doesn't matter no yeah a lot of these specialties are kind of falling apart in the United States um, because the American Dental Association is the one who created all these specialties but they're not part of the government they're just an organization so we just had a, 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 a test in Texas where the American Dental Association sued a dentist for declaring that he was an implantologist. He specialized in implants. And the American Dental Association said, you can't do that. And the government said, well, you're just a club. You, you, don't, you don't have any authority. And they just asked him, were you really a specialist in implantology? And he, yeah. he was. So they said, he's fine. So I think a lot of uh, that it's, it's new chartered water do the french people know are they familiar with a specialist endodontist who only does root canals not in the suburb road but in paris yes in big cities like uh, i said some big cities in france we have paris marseille uh, lyon bordeaux and then no specialist and then no endodontics but the main problem is um what is the training of about the uh, the person who says that they are endodontists because there is no special in France, so the training is very, uh, um, it's very diverse, very different between uh, uh, endodontists in France. So it's like a, it's, it's like a mess for my specialty. So who's the most famous endodontist who does the root canals on Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck up the street here at Euro Disney? Oh, <laughs> someone in Mont Lavalée or uh, something? But who's <laughs> treating Goofy? Um, so when you said only 3% of the dentists use a rubber dam, do dentists in France use a rubber dam during a root canal? So for all the care, 3% for all the care. So for anything. Yeah. So what do you think of um, what do you think of when these dentists are doing a root canal without a rubber dam? You're an endodontist. What do you what do you think about that? No comment. No, you got to comment. This is dentistry uncensored. No, they're so just they're just driving to work right now. Tell them what you think. It's 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 just not uh, in dentics. It's something else. So it's not it's not under. It's like you need the rubber dam for several reasons, but it's it's uh, mandatory for that. You you can do good under or good care without uh, the rubber dam. It's impossible. So they do something else. Not dentistry. Not in dentics. Yeah, endodontics is all about taking the infection out. Yeah. But so many general dentists, they almost think about it's what you put into the tooth and how it looks like on an x-ray. It's almost like they're photoshopping an x-ray. And it's, it's all about endos, about taking out the infection, not about what you're putting into it. It's about what you're taking out. It's very important to, to, to be aware about what you're taking out. But when you fill the root canal, it's very important too. So you need that there is no leakage, no saliva inside, no decay. It's very important. It's quite like the no same. No doubt. 
no no doubt i completely agree but yeah. but taking out the infection yeah is a rubber dam cleaning oh, shaping yeah cleaning the hand everything yeah so wearing a mask um I work on the microscope. I, I do I do my job at the best way I can. So what microscope do you use? Uh, it's, it's a Zeiss one. It's a Pico Zeiss? one. Yeah. And how much did you pay for that? Oh, long time ago. It was I spoke in euros. It was uh, uh, ten ten thousand. Ten thousand euros. Yeah. And what would be that be in mm, US dollars? So ten thousand. Yeah. Just add 20, 20 more, 20% more. Uh, $12,000 for a Zeiss. And do you mount that on the ceiling or is it portable? No, it's portable, yeah. It's portable? Yeah. And do you work alone or with another endodontist? We are, uh, no, not with another dentist, but we, have, uh, we are um, several dentists, uh, two prosthetic and, and myself. So in the office. So why did you? Uh, why are you amalgam free? Why do you not like amalgam? Why, Anthony? Why? Why are you so mean? I mean, and, and no, I'm not, and not, furthermore, I, I'm not I, I mean. I'm you. not mean against amalgam. Like I, I want to warn you, we're staying in the Hotel Mercury. <laughs> oh yeah. So this is, <laughs> isn't this where I, I don't feel good? Like I, did, I feel Pierre, like Mer like, did Pierre <laughs> Fichard invent the mercury filling here <laughs> no, in this hotel? No. The, uh, first, I, I just want to. Um, to say just one more thing about uh, the Robert Dam. Uh, we used to work as, a, as teachers um, at the university, so we used to, to work with students, and we try to to um, to make them understand that it's mandatory. But uh, I don't like to to insist too much on the 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 infection control because. You understand the uh, the idea, but you don't feel you don't feel it when you're walking. The best thing for um, for the Robertam for me, it's my pleasure and my uh, it's it's comfy when you're walking under uh, Robertam. You don't have any saliva, you don't have the the tongue, you don't have the lips, you don't have you, you and you, you. It's easy, easy, so easy to to see and to control what you what to what you are doing, and. You can. There is so many good reason to use uh, rubber dam, but the, for me, the best reason is <coughs> it's so much more comfortable for me. Well, I don't know what you uh, like. Yeah, I you, agree. you don't touch the sal saliva. You don't. It's okay. It's. There's no noise from the vacuum. You can you can work without an assistance. Without, without a dental assistant, and you have to know that in France, less than w less than fifty percent of the dentists don't have a dental assistant. Less than fifty percent of the dentists have yeah. a dental assistant. Yes. Less than half use it. Yes. And is that because labor costs a lot of money, or is it because the reimbursement rate is so low you can't afford the labor? Both. Maybe, bo both. Bo maybe both. I mean, the overhead is huge. The overhead is huge, and. Um, and really, no, no, it's it's really uh, something we miss. Something we miss. We are the French are not the French dentists are not used to to work with two or three, maybe the big offices, of course, but two or three as, as dental assistants. No, it's it's only in, in American movies. So, us. do does the average French dentist practice by himself or with another person? I don't know, but uh, I think there is a, a lot of uh, dentists who, who are by themselves. And uh, is the majority by themselves? The majority, I don't know, but no, I. Yeah, but it, the the um, we try to to make some bigger offices because it's easier when you 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 share uh, uh, as dental assistant when you share uh, uh, the, um, office manager and everything, um, and it's it's harder and harder each year for the, the dentists who are working by themselves because they have to, to deal with everything at, at the same time it's it's so difficult do do you three work by yourselves or do you three have assistants uh, I have assistant we all have assistant yeah you all have all one? Have that might be the best way to position this to the French social security system that if they raised your fee structure 35,000 dentists would create 35,000 new jobs by they would all hire a dental assistant. 
It would actually be an economic stimulus if they raised the fees. Yes, but uh, you, we've got a lot... Uh, how do you say? Uh, the grave. Like, we have a lot of strikes right now because the, uh, of the government trying to, to change the, the rules for... What do you call it? Employment uh, laws. So uh, what, what, it's what, very, what, very difficult. Which, which laws are they changing that's causing the people to strike? The what, what are they is, not like? There is a lot of strikes, but I'm sure any, nobody knows what's, what's going to change in the, in the new law. But it's so French, you have to like, is they going to change something? Oh, we should make a strike. Uh, so the, you're saying the French people like to strike? Uh, we don't <laughs> but uh in general like the um, yeah the, we don't, we don't, we've always, got a lot of strikes i always found it interesting in the united states um strikes are always in certain industries like uh, airlines are always striking um airline companies airline makers like boeing but then high-tech companies like uh, microsoft intel oracle ebay all the high techs have never had a strike But all the car manufacturers, the plane manufacturers, the the teachers, it seems like to, so it seems to be more cultural, because in some sectors there's no culture yes. of striking, yeah, it's the same and then in other in other sectors in America, they just they've been on strike since 1950, on and off. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I think our country is a, is a strike country. It's like it's a, a cultural strike in the country. It's not uh, it's not uh, between uh, the truck driver or the, in, uh, the nurse or the teachers. Uh, French people love strikes. They, they love to speak loud and they love to, to be in the street and 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 cry and, and disagree. So, we like yeah. to disagree all the time. Yeah. And they like what? <laughs> we like to disagree with everything. Like no, we are not okay with that. We want to change. Our First, we are not okay. After we're thinking about <laughs> the, the, the proposition and say, oh, maybe, maybe you, you're right. But first, we disagree. But And after we think, the the uh, employment uh, laws are uh, very difficult for us because, y for example, it's very simple. If you give two um, thousand uh, euros to your dental assistant, you have to pay four two for your assistant and two for the taxes for the government it's right. so you want if you want to to write the the, um, the money you want to give to give to your dental assistant you think twice because you're gonna you're gonna uh, give it twice and i think it's the one of the biggest problem uh, that's why dentists uh, don't want to to hire some uh, some dental assistant and in france if you've got some If you, okay, it doesn't work. You don't like your dental assistant, and you want to change, and you cannot. Like, if you want to change your dental assistant, e you have to find a very, very big mistake she could do to 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 to, to say, okay, I don't, wa I want to stop the contract because um, the government tried to to protect um, uh, employees, and it's okay, but sometimes it just doesn't work. So you have to stop this collaboration, but. And you can't. So, so it's very um, difficult. So of the 35,000 um, dentists, what percent of them place an implant in the jaw? Would do the surgery, place the implant into the jaw? I really don't know the numbers, but uh, more and more each yeah, year. More more. Maybe yeah. I, I think more than, more, than a, more than half had tried to, to put some implants. Agree. More than half. Yeah. I think so, but... Uh, for... for The first reason is economical reason because implants is not reimbursed by the social security. So dentists can charge whatever they want for the price of an implant. So they can do what they want. So I think it's like a, a new era to, to earn some money in your office. So as an endodontist, do you ever see a failed root canal and decide instead of retreating this? I'm going to extract it and place an implant. Do you do that yourself? No. No, no. Because you're a specialist. Yeah, but I know that in, in US you can do, you can be special if in London you can put implants. So um, it's not a problem. But in my practice, uh, no, I don't put implants. And um, since they pay you so little for a filling, um, has that stimulated CAD CAM? 
um, like Serona CAD CAM because you can charge more for um, an, an indirect than a direct? Uh, f first of all, I I've said that you are not allowed to, to ask for more than f uh, $50, uh, but I I it's a little bit what he said. Like, uh, you're not allowed, but if you want to do it properly and it takes one hour to do it, you have to ask more for more. It's so, French paradox. Yeah. So French paradox? You are not allowed to, but you, but you ask. And you wait, maybe the government uh, is going to knock the door one day and, uh, and tell you, oh, you have to, to give the money back because uh, you, so what you cheat with the system. What, what percent of the dentists do you think in France break the law and ask for more, <laughs> even though they're not supposed to? Um, on this French paradox you're talking about. Maybe it's uh, a little it's bit... Not, uh, it's not breaking the law. No. It's like... Um, there is a gray zone. Yeah. Like you, You're not supposed to do it. But you do it, and the patient are uh, you, you warn the, the patient like uh, he's got an invoice, and he know how much the the government is gonna pay to get away from. That contract you signed though doesn't it specifically say you cannot ask for more. Mm. I mean, it either says <laughs> it or it does not. I mean, I'm not a lawyer. No, 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 I know, no, no, no. It says for sure. It says you can't. Yeah. So then it's not gray. You're breaking the law. You're breaking the contract. Yes, but the problem is you cannot do like there, you've got only. Uh, well, two you know, choice. I just I just figured out my <laughs> my mom and dad uh, um, are both Irish, and all my grandparents are Irish. My great grandparents are Irish, but when you say about this law thing, it sounds like I'm French. I've always thought that all laws were just a suggestion. <laughs> I never I never took them serious. I always figured all laws were written by idiots. And uh, and I just I just uh, no, but it, it, the problem is uh, the ID uh, at the beginning it's good. We want like to the, we want that everybody uh, can be treated and can be can take uh, take care of about their teeth and everything. But it, but, it, but now it but doesn't wanna, work anymore. But but I want to challenge that because um, Singapore has no insurance. China has no dental insurance. Russia does not. India does not. Brazil does. The, the, the biggest countries in the world, Brazil, Russia, China, India, Singapore, none of them have dental insurance. And, when, and the insurance doesn't subsidize me buying a car, a motorcycle, a helmet, an iPhone. But in dentistry, the cavity is because you ate chocolate and an eclair and you didn't brush the biofilm off your teeth. So since it's completely preventable, do you think it's really wise for a government to subsidize a disease that you have simply because you ate sugar and didn't brush and floss your teeth? We don't think like that in France. Like you don't, the, but no, like, but do the people not think like that, or do you not think like no, that? No, I mean, why? Uh, why should the government? Why should the government? I mean, it. It almost. I mean, why does the government subsidize? you to doesn't it kind of encourage not to brush and floss um i mean it's just like a can cancer i mean they, they they just say not do not smoke okay but they don't they don't give they don't give you up if you got cancer they will well, they will help thought, you they will help you with the treatments that the, that the uh, cigarettes should be taxed exactly enough or more to treat everyone's emphysema, heart attacks, lung cancer, you know what I mean? I mean, it should say, okay, if, if one in four Americans want to smoke, they should, each time they buy a pack, they should pay for their future treatment for emphysema and lung cancer. And maybe there should be a sugar tax. Maybe you could raise the price of a filling if the French people said, we're gonna charge uh, 10 euros on every pound kilogram of sugar um, because I mean, could yeah, we really have French, France is the country of the kitchen, con country of pastries. Okay, it's not really, it's not really PC <laughs> if, you, if you already start to charge more yeah. for for candies. Okay, no, I'm joking. So, but uh, so so, but back to the question, CAD CAM. Oh, sorry. Um, yes, it, it, it grows. It grows for sure. <laughs> no. Is, is the growth? Yeah, but, yeah, I, but I, I uh, the, the problem. Is I, I, uh, no, I, if you had a cat cam, a chair side cat cam machine, you you have to ask uh, for more 
then uh, it doesn't change the the game. Like you have to ask for more. Um, he, and it's not sure that it allows you to to go faster because uh, when you're dealing with the with the the cat cam, there is other thing you have to do with the um, with the the design of the prosthetics and and the, and the, <coughs> you have to cook your ceramic if you want to use ceramic. So uh, it's not the the solution. It's I think cat cam it's unbelievable because it's gonna raise the the average level of dentistry in general. Um, but uh, the problem for the the reason uh, why it, it doesn't go up doesn't go more than uh, than than that it's just because uh, technologies are ready like you can use a camera it works you can use a milling machine it works very well it's perfect but it, the communication between the, the the devices it's still not good if you want to buy a, a tree shape uh, uh, anterior scanner it doesn't work with the the milling machine from uh, from uh, Plomek or Sirona. I don't know. And it doesn't with dense by Sirona. It would with Plan Mecca. Yes, but it, it begins to change. Right. But it's still very difficult to the the, the 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 digi digital workflow is. It's not. It, it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't go like. Sirac was started in France. Yes. Tell, tell, them, tell the I don't know exactly the story, but uh, one of the bigger guy, uh, one of the Pierre for <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> but one of the biggest guy in uh, in digital uh, in uh, CAD CAM is um, uh, I forget his name, um, uh, François So in, in, um, in yeah. not of the CAD CAM of the. Um, not only of the Sarah, of the um, the idea of uh, CAD CAM in dentistry, yeah. and Jean Francois Roulet, is that? No. Yeah, he's selected. He's selected. Yeah, he's got like maybe uh, fifty. Um, the uh, la cinquante brevets or Jean Francois. Oui, c'est ça. Moi, je pense. I forgot his name. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Monsieur Roulet. <laughs> 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 Yeah, he, he, I think he started that in, what, 1979 or 1980 in Paris? 1980, yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah, and uh, amazing story. It all started here, but it's kind of really exploded in the United States and yes. Germany. But of started, course. But it started here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, we are really happy that it's a French guy, but uh, as I you can to, see... Uh, like, <laughs> I tried to podcast interview him, but he's just he's not an English. Oh. He said I'd have to learn French. <laughs> <laughs> no. And the digital radiography is French too, no? Who? The digital radiography. The RVG, the, the, the Kodak Trophy, it's French too. Yes. So it was created in French. Digital so. X rays, yeah. Yeah. Digital X rays started in yeah. French too? Yeah. I, I didn't say that. He, he, he said it. <laughs> I said. <laughs> No, but for the CAD CAM, it's sure, yeah, that... Uh, so you don't really see CAD CAM taking off in France now? Uh, it Maybe will, it will, but uh, the, 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 the problem is not uh, if it will or not. The problem is when. When uh, the... And uh, I think in uh, the ten, uh, in 10 years, maybe... I don't know, maybe 20 or 30% of the... of the dentists will have the, the, the entire scanner. At least the entire scanner, not uh, not the million machine, but uh, the scanner, yeah, for sure. So um, you tell us um, a I lot of speak about the avant -garde. Yeah, well, a lot of Americans, um, a lot of Americans say things. Um, they just flippantly say things like, "Well, a mercury amalgam was banned in Europe," and. First, yet, yeah, well, first of all, I, there's no really such thing as Europe. I mean, Europe is a continent. I mean, you can't compare France to Italy to Germany to England. I mean, there's 20 different, very diverse countries. Uh, and there's certainly no ban in mercury amalgam in, in Europe. But why do you think so many Americans think that mercury was banned in Europe? And is mercury banned in any European country? Are there any dentists... In Denmark, Sweden, Scandinavia, are there any dentists in any countries in Europe that you're aware of that 
Ill- that legally cannot place yes, Mercury? Yes, in uh, Scandinavia, it's not a lo- yeah, it's, it's, uh, not it's forbidden now. It, it begins with a um, pregnant woman and uh, and child, and, uh, and after it was with uh, everybody. Like in Scandinavia, there is no amalgam anymore. Yeah, Scandinavia is five countries, right? Uh, Iceland, Denmark, I'm not Sweden, sure, uh, Finland, Sweden, Sweden, and, uh, Sweden and Finland. Uh, in a way. Yeah. But uh, Iceland... Norway, so it's Iceland, Norway. I'm not sure about not Iceland. Sure, not sure about Iceland. It's Norway, Sweden, uh, uh, Denmark, and, uh, Denmark, and Finland. Okay. So, so Mercury is banned on pregnant women? No, uh, over there for everybody. So nobody yeah. in yeah, but it's not can, so nobody can use mercury filling in those four Scandinavian countries. Yeah, Norway, Denmark, Finland, Sweden. It's what I what I yeah. want. Like, yeah. yeah. And do you see that trend rolling all around? Europe? Yes, uh, there is something very interesting about that. It uh, it, uh, it hasn't been uh, forbidden for uh, for. It's, it, it for health reasons, yeah, for toxicology. It's um, um, about uh, about uh, yeah, yeah eco- uh, ecology, yeah, yeah. like it's for, uh, for to, to avoid for to, and to like kill that. all the fishes and. Uh, so, so they're banning that for environmental purposes. Yeah, yeah. more than toxicology. Yeah, and but, but why did why did Anthony why did you Anthony stop doing this? Um, it's he likes a white. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I, <laughs> I prefer when it's white. No, uh, the wool within is uh, more about biomimetics uh, and and bio uh, biomechani- biomechanics of the tooth. The problem is amalgam. Uh, it's it's not a, a it's not a restoration. It's a, an obturation. Like you put something in a hole and uh, and you you keep it in place and you wait. Um, with the 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 bonding now, yeah, we are able to bond on the tooth uh, some polymers, w- which are maybe a little bit are better on the bio the biomechanical uh, aspect of the tooth. I feel it's like the the papers and the, the studies on that subject show that uh, um, you've got so m- much less. Um, crack to sun, uh, syn- uh, syndrome and and uh, fractures on the to d- who have uh, had a composite than amalgam. So we used to in France we used to say yes, but amalgam on uh, for decades it's better because if you got a patient who don't want to brush his teeth and everything, it's better to put an amalgam because uh, it won't have uh, sun- secondary decays. It's a little bit true. Yes, come on, please. Come here, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a little bit uh, true, but not so much, first of all. And the the mechanical behavior, it's uh, it's it's very very bad with uh, with amalgam. So for me, the problem about amalgam, it's not the the tox- toxicology of the the amalgam of the mer- of mercury. It's more uh, more. Um, uh, it's more about the, the mechanical behavior and the f- uh, problem about fracture and crack tooth syndrome and everything. This is the m- the main issue of the of the amalgam. I uh, I think the last straw for what what I love the most about amalgam is that it's it's antibacterial. I mean, so uh, tin ions, you know, it's mercury, silver, zinc, copper, tin. The tin, stannous fluoride, very antibacterial. Uh, silver. You know, we, we use silver linings in uh, pediatric dentistry. It's very, but um, the composites, I can't wait till they have some antibacterial properties. But the last straw for, you were talking about mercury being uh, banned for environmental reasons more than health reasons. Um, they say 50% of the mercury contamination comes from burning coal. Oh. Burning coal. Uh, coal for energy. Oh, yeah, okay. Burning coal for electricity. But 6% comes from cremating humans. Three and a half million humans are cremated every year. And when they cremate the, the skull, the, the mercury vapor goes into the air. And they think 6% of the Earth's in mercury contamination is from cremating humans. So even if we all stopped uh, doing amalgams today, we'll be cremating humans who died. I mean, when I die, I don't want to be put into an aluminum casket. I think that's pollution. I, I want to be cremated. 
but I, I don't have any amalgam fillings. I have uh, all gold, but, um, but we'll be cremating people for a century. So they need to pass a law that nobody can be cremated until a dentist uh, pulls those teeth. And I, w- I want to get that job because I, can, I won't have to worry about numbing up. I won't have to worry about saying an offensive joke. You know, no one will get, no one will get mad. Uh, that would just be the ideal patient, wouldn't it? Someone who's completely dead and I'm just going to pull five of their teeth. Um, so um, I want to ask another question. Do you use glass ionomer? Um, never for... Um only for uh, temporary restorations. Only for temporary? Yeah. And what, what composite restoration do you like? What composite are you using? Uh, for uh, direct restorations? For direct restorations. Uh, f- for wheel, I just don't care. Like, I don't care about what kind of composite I have in my, uh, in my, uh, in my office. Uh, I just take what I have. Because what I really think is it's not about uh, what you are using. It's about, it's about how how you are using it and of course there is some composite that I, I prefer the the tex- uh, texture and the uh, viscosity and everything but I could do it with any composite almost because uh, it's, yeah. uh, but it's not the same for the for the bonding system okay. for the bonding system I think there is a there is big uh, differences bet- between the systems so which, which systems do you like and why? Uh, I use uh, two uh, from um, from Care, uh, the uh, Optibon FL and the uh, Optibon XTR. And uh, there is another one that I like. Uh, it's a uh, Clearfield S uh, Bond from uh, Curare, which is, I think, very good. But I think you we don't need a lot, a lot of different uh, adhesives. We just need, like, maybe two. One uh, self-edge and one uh, total edge. With that, you can do uh, anything, and you, uh, you just have to to follow the um, to follow the uh, the, manuf- the guidelines of the manufacturer. So, for total etch, you like Kerr, um, owned by Danaher in California, and for self etch, you like Clear Fill by Kurai, uh, Kurai, Kurai, Kurai or, uh, in uh, Japan, which is from uh, Kerr, also. Okay. And um, and you use a rubber dam and you use a rubber dam on all those. Um, all my uh, cases. The only cases uh, when I'm doing um, um, bonding dentistry, like I'm doing uh, uh, composites, uh, when I the only cases uh, where I'm not using a rubber dam is uh, sometimes when I'm doing um, class five like um, cervical areas. When the the periodontal is very very thin, sometimes I just put some uh, Teflon tape. Oh, sorry, Teflon tape inside the sulcus, and I protect with the with a lot a lot of different system. But sometimes to put the rubber dam inside the sulcus when you have a very very thin uh, gingiva, it can be uh, it can be difficult. So it's just the the only case. But for all the other cases. Bonding veneers, bonding inlay, onlay. Uh, even when I'm doing a, a, a composite post and core, I, I put the, the rubber dam. It the for me it the only way to be sure that I control the the um, the humidity of the of the of the field. So, uh, on the same question to you, you're an endodontist. Yeah. Um, wouldn't the research say? That the best buildup after a molar root canal would actually be an amalgam core, or do you do you use amalgam core buildup, or do you think that's not true, and do you like um, more resin buildups after a root canal? I'm more resin buildup, but in my practice, I don't uh, do, uh, I don't do the the, the core buildup. I stop. Do you, do you, do you not no, have no. mercury? No. Do you don't have the amalgam? I stop after the filling of the root canal. I stop my uh, my job. I oh, just, so yeah. you refer back the root canal yeah. without the building. Yeah. yeah. Huh. And do you think that's wise since that seal is one of the most important parts of a root canal? No, I think it's a big mistake. It's, I think it's a big mistake, but uh, for my Because wife, I, I always thought the endodontist should do that at that time. Yeah, that's so but I, I don't uh, well train my referees, maybe not, yeah. not yet. So my referees want to do the, the, the build up. 
themselves. So, so what do you temporize it with? Uh, it, it depends. Um, uh, like a copper burn, if there is a big destruction, uh, it could be a glass ionomer. If there is a, a small destruction or a cavit, if there is a, like a, um, just few days be before the the next appointment. So it and depends. you know who invented cavit? No. That was invented um, by the Germans in World War II. That was for their soldiers to have an on-site treatment for a, a broken tooth. They w what the genius part of the cavit was, was you would take out the zinc zinc on eugenol, but as soon as it got wet, it would start to set up. Yeah. So, they, so in their emergency kit, they would break that open, they'd put the soft putty in the hole, and then they'd lick it, and the s water in the saliva would make it set up. I'm glad to be not a warrior, you know? What's that? I'm glad to be not a warrior. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, you can even buy it in the supermarkets in the US. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yes, yeah. Huh? yeah. So, um, why? <laughs> so, one of, one of the problems um, I think a lot of these young dentists have, um, you're, you're talking to tens of thousands of dentists, and probably under 30, and a lot of them come out of school. And 82% of American dentists take what they call PPOs, which are these discount plans where the prices are 40% lower. And like here and like London, they don't make they don't make anything on a cleaning exam, X-ray, and a filling. And in America, you know, the dentists that make the most money, they do the big procedures. They do molar root canals, they do dentures, they place implants, they do crowns. Most of them will all do crowns. But if the crown's the only thing they do, their their overheads in trouble. They need to be able to do um, more than a crown, like a molar root canal. Uh, like a partial, a denture, place an implant. But so many of them, they come out of school and they just say, I'm not doing molar endo, I hate it. And I get it because I hate pediatric dentistry. I mean, I cannot stand working on a screaming three-year-old. I mean, I just, I, if, if I had to be a pediatric dentist, I would quit. But what advice could you give? Do, well, do you like kids? Do you like? Uh, yes, I like kids uh, for sure, but I wouldn't even like uh, pediatrics. Uh, but you, not, like, not, not talking children, but do you like doing pulpotomies and chrome steel crowns on three-year-old kids uh, yes all you days like that no <laughs> yeah <laughs> but so what, what advice would you give to a kid that just walked out of dental school and threw in the towel with molar and don't set you know i hate it i hate it why do you love it and why do you half the people looking at you right now hate it and how could you make them love how can you make them love something they hate uh, <laughs> i speak <laughs> No, but it's simple because it's. I, I speak for myself, but I think it's the same for Anthony. It it depends on the the, the people that you meet between uh, when you 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 will you you do your training. So I I meet a a, a special person that uh, um, present me endodontics like a fun discipline, and I love it. And thanks to him, it it's my job, and I like it every day. So it depends really on the, the people, your teachers, your colleagues. And, and so uh, thanks to this person, it's called Pierre Machtou. Uh, so my job is, is quite fun every day. Do you, do you think you love it because you're drinking French champagne all day while you're doing Rucanos? <laughs> Never alcohol when I walk. Never. So you just, you just think that you love it because you're yeah, because a teacher? Yeah, because um, when, I do my, when I did my residency, the first, the first month I want to do uh, periodontology. I want to do surgery. I want to do put to put implants and I want yeah, to do the same. Like I thing. want to to be some blood and and I met I met Pierre Machtou and he said no, it's not the right way. I think that you can try this and try this, and when you have the first result, your first gut result, then you understand something. So I, I think that for the student, you have to to find your own way and to do what you want, and and it's good. Yeah, you know, I, uh, I totally agree, with, uh, Gregory. It just just about the people you met before uh, during your your studies. Uh, for example, uh, for me it was the same. Uh, I've done my thesis uh, for the end of my studies on the surgery uh, uh, topics, uh, and now I'm only doing uh, adhesive and aesthetic and uh, prosthetic dentistry. Uh, and, and I, I do some surgery, but uh, it's not the biggest part of my job. So um, I met the, the, the right people. The, the at the right time. At the right time, yeah, exactly. I, I, I still agree because I've always believed that when people say, oh, I'm horrible in math, 
They had a horrible math teacher. And people say, oh, I hate economics. They had a horrible economics teacher. And if you really had a great teacher, maybe, maybe if someone really would have showed me pediatric dentistry when I was little, maybe I, I would have yeah, loved it. Yeah, you can join everything, I think, with yeah. a good teacher. I think so. But yeah, I think that when, you, when you're horrible at something, uh, there's, there are two ways to, to improve. Or you delegate the work to, to a specialist, okay. or you try to, to do more CE, more training, And for in my case, uh, two years for two, for two for two years, um, I do like to I do like to do adhesive, adhesive uh, dentistry. Uh, I didn't like it before because it was very constraining, underpaid, and so on. And then uh, thanks to thanks to uh, to the internet, uh, the the bioanimation movements, the style Italiano movements. Uh, teaches to all a lot of things and so I went to all this uh, all these congresses followed uh, followed some mentors uh, just like Anthony and um, and now uh, it's a it's a it's a pleasure to do to, to do this thing so the key is the key is the training and if 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 you're outside the, the university the university system uh, then do do more CE do the continuing education and do do training <laughs> And you're talk about the internet more because you're a legend in internet dentistry. <laughs> you started eugenol.com, which is a um, I started Dental Town in the United States in English, and you started uh, eugenol in French. And at the same time, uh, at the same time, there's a dozen French countries. What is it? Brussels that speak French, but Brussels, Belgium. Well, most of the audience is French. But uh, there, are, um, there are a lot of uh, dentists coming from uh, Belgium, Luxembourg, then Canada, some from North Africa, but uh, the, the biggest the bigger the audience is French. And there's hundreds of thousands of posts on eugenol.com. Talk, talk about that. How it's very active. Well, I, I, d I didn't know how, how, the, how, the, how the snowball uh, get, uh, got bigger. Uh, I remember that we, oh, we I, had... Oh, I hear you. I, I, we I hear you. Yeah. And we had uh, actually we had a forum on uh, another website, and uh, it didn't work. I don't know three messages. What was it called? Oh, it was on abcden.fr, and it was uh, uh, the name was uh, Amphi uh, Amphitheater 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 is a comment dire un amphitheater en anglais. Anyway. And um, so the, the name did it work, and uh, so we choose to to remove the to to, to move the the forum uh, outside the web, outside the website, and uh, to to get uh, its own its own domain name. And what year what year was that? Uh, it was in ninety. No, it was in two thousand one. In two thousand one. And I started in 1998, and everyone thought it was. Crazy, stupid, yeah. insane. We started in 1998, 1999, and uh, but for two years it didn't work. During training, it I didn't agree. work. Dental Town really didn't take off till 2001. Mm. And then, two and then in 2001, uh, then it. Uh, yeah, people don't realize this, but in uh, I was lecturing in 1990, like 50 cities a year, and we started Dental Town in 98. And every weekend, I'd have a lecture of a couple hundred dentists. I'd say, how many of you are on the internet? And maybe one hand would go up and maybe not. And then as his hand went up, I'd say, well, what is your email address? Oh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, they didn't. I mean, so it, the dentist really didn't start getting email till about 2001. And the only reason they got email in 2001 or the Internet is because the kids were coming home from school and the teacher was saying you needed to get on the Internet to do these homework assignments on Mars and Saturn and Pluto and uh So congratulations on being ahead of your time. And you never thought it would get this big, did you? Nobody. Yeah, nobody. 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 I remember my dad and my sister Shelly and my ex-wife one day spending an entire day in my kitchen crying. All of them crying. Telling me that I was a mad, crazy man and to stop this stupid thing called dental down. And it was taking all my time and, and I just thought it would be huge. And uh, nobody really did. So, so what's your plans with Eugenol now? Uh, my plans, uh, we would like to, to extend to, to more countries and to start, uh, start translating with automatic translation uh, and uh, all, the, all the posts and then, uh, and then, then wait for the, um, again for, the, for, for another snowball and uh, pe people posting in their, in their language 
in the nat native languages and not uh, not waiting to f from the post to be translated. Yeah, I and, and um, well, this this podcast might help you because we have a lot of uh, Canadians, and of course, it's kind of funny when you go around the world. Um, uh, like when you go to Poland, the largest Polish city outside of Poland is Chicago. Chicago has a million poles, and if you go to Iran. Everyone in Iran has a cousin in California. I mean, there's like a million Iranians. And um, probably everybody in France has a cousin that lives in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Wouldn't you say? I mean, do you? Do you know? No, I, I, uh, like, yes, I do. But uh, yeah. Yeah, do, do you have any cousins in uh, Montreal? <laughs> <Are you? laughs> what about you, Jerome? A lot friends, yes. Yeah, uh, yeah, just friends. It doesn't count. Not, not <laughs> and... Um, But in the United States, I would say all the French dentists I know are out of uh, Washington, D.C. or New York City. Is there another city I'm not aware? Is there like a Chicago for Polish people? You know, Poland, yeah. they all went to Chicago. What, what is the most common city French people immigrate to in the United States? Where, where do they cluster mostly? I think so. Uh, for dentists, I don't know, but I think so. It's, uh, it, it should be New York. Uh, maybe and Miami. And my, yeah, Miami. Miami. For uh, elder ones, no. <laughs> not, for, not only for the for for little people, but a lot of young people are now going to to Florida and. Uh, I mean, it's every, every every major city on the east coast. Uh, but yeah, Montreal, but Montreal would be the largest. Uh, maybe, maybe yes, but uh, yeah, for, we are definitely more attracted by the west coast, the the east coast, mm -hmm. than the west coast. Yeah. We do. I don't know. Maybe one people who lives in uh, in uh, Los Angeles, but it's it's not uh, so, so common. Do you have a lot of online C courses on Eugenol, or is it ABC Dental? No, ABC Dental is on, ABC Dent is only referring uh, referring to all the all, all the courses, uh, whether they are online or physical. But we don't provide any CE. Okay. Well, um, like say. Um, I always think in hope, growth, and abundance. I only want my homies to be able to fall in love with dentistry, do it, be happy, healthy, and provide dentistry faster, easier, higher quality for a lower cost. So all the patients win. The, the planet has 7 billion people and only 2 million dentists. And I always think that every time you help one dentist, you help 3,500 dentists who are relying on that dentist to get them care. So any, um, like in the United States, um, some people think that like the dental magazines compete with each other. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Every dentist I know reads three or four magazines. Um, every dentist I know uh, goes on several websites or Facebook or Twitter or Pinterest, LinkedIn. I mean, anything to help a dentist, I'm all into. I want to ask you one, uh, one uh, I'm sorry that the hour's over. It's already two minutes in overtime. I, I, I still got a few more questions. Um, Is dentistry what what percent is it boy versus girl and is that changing or what? It would talk about that. Uh, I now I think uh, there is uh, more girls. Yeah, I think maybe is it's uh, six. It's sixty. Uh, yeah, it's sixty forty, but uh, 60, 40 no, sixty percent girls. For the whole country, or for uh, it, it, it's it's for our graduating. Graduating. Yeah. And, and what is it if you're like over 50, like my age, 53? No, I think it's still like maybe it should be a little, uh, Small man. Seven, uh, 70, uh, 30, something like that. 70, 30. Yeah, or maybe, maybe more uh, 60, male. It's, um, the main reason is like, uh, it's due to the. Um, to, oh. Sorry. So the main reason is due to the, to uh, to the exam to to enter in dentistry uh, because uh, the exam is very competitive, and so the girls works better than the men <laughs> at this type of age when you are That's true. yeah. Explain that. That's very and so, well but when the girls are maybe 20, 21, it's like uh, the time for to to do the, to pass this big exam in France, and it's very competitive. It's in one year, and you have like. Uh, Um, few places to be to become a dentist. I'll, so I'll speak more blunt since this is a dentistry uncensored. I've seen the research. Um, girls go through their hormonal changes when they're like ten percent by age ten. They're all into it by twelve or thirteen. So by the time they're in college, their heads on straight. Yeah. Boys go through their hormonal changes at seventeen and eighteen at the most critical time of a college entrance exam. So in the United States, 
the average boy does a half on, on a one to four, zero, uh, one, two, three, four, four being perfect, does a half point lower grade point average than girls because they go to college and they go into heat and they go crazy for a year and this is when they need to be studying. So yeah. boys are at a huge disadvantage uh, uh, with that. But that's okay. <laughs> but that's okay. Oh, and I, I want to say one last thing also. Um, the biggest complaint American dentists have that are under 30 is their student loan debt. Uh, the average student's coming out about $350,000 in student loan debts. And your dental schools are free. Almost. Yeah. <laughs> there are, now, now everyone's wishing they were French. Explain why your dental schools are free and that, God, that must be nice. Uh, it's the same idea than uh, social security. We want to everybody to be able to to be a dentist if he, if he, if he yeah. walk uh, well, enough to. Free for uh, university, yes, it's not totally free, but uh, it's it's something stupid compared to US. Like so maybe it's uh, so no matter what you want to study, economics, law. Yeah, medicine. at the university, yes. After you have uh, private schools. And you have to pay a lot to go for uh, some kinds of uh, for uh, some kinds of economics uh, school or uh, yeah. or uh, business school or stuff like that. But for university, for medicine, for uh, dentistry, for uh, a lot a lot of things, you, you you don't pay like it's nothing. And my final question I want to ask you because I know we're in overtime is uh, who are you more proud of? The Mona Lisa or Pierre Fouchard, the father of dentistry? <laughs> Is Mona Lisa has been painted by a French guy? No. no. Mona Lisa was uh, <laughs> Italian. Italian. Yeah. Leonardo da Vinci. Yeah, but it's in the Louvre. Yeah. yeah. Why, why, why is it painted by an Italian but in the French Louvre? I think we stole it. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Like Sorry? We stole it. Leonardo Mona Lisa? <laughs> <laughs> way, um, no. I wonder what percent of Americans know that the Mona Lisa, if I said, was the Mona Lisa painted by Leonardo da Vinci or Leonardo DiCaprio from the Titanic? (laughs) I wonder what percent of Americans would pick Leonardo DiCaprio from the Titanic. I bet it'd be 50-50. What do do you think? In France, you mean? No, in the United States. Oh, no. No, no, I, I no, no, for sure. Like everybody knows that uh, Leonardo DiCaprio uh, spent it. <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio painted the Mona Lisa when he was very young, and uh, all my jokes are bad. All my jokes are stupid. Hey, hey, would just would you mind just stepping in here one time? Just they, my homies have never seen you. Come on, they they've never seen you. You don't want to be on the camera. They all wants to see. Oh, me. Greg, <laughs> just come, just say hi. Come on, Ryan's gonna say hi. I'm uh, I. Hello. I feel so lucky. Thanks for getting this picture. So I got four boys. This is my uh, second one, Greg. This is my third one, Ryan. And I just think it was so cool that on Father's Day, you went with your dad to London, Paris, and Glasgow to uh, film some podcasts and lecture with your dad. Thanks for always going with me. It's never work when you guys are with me.